coming up on Fresh Dew with Pastor Inkechi Ene. Child of God, when you are drunk in fellowship with the Holy Spirit, which is the foundation of this economic system? Which is the only way you can truly operate it when you have that kind of walk with God? When you are drunk, you're oblivious. When they tell you that the, the banks want to shut down, you're like a drunk man. It means nothing to you. I'm Pastor Nkechi Ene, and welcome to my home. And thank you for letting me into your home and into your private place or wherever you are. Today, I'm really excited about what I'm here to do. I'm here to give some really good news that gives me a lot of joy. Now, before I do that, I'll tell you one fun fact about myself that should give you a hint. I love to write and I love to read. I love to write and I love to read. Yes, you guessed right. My brand new book, Dancing with Your Spirit, being led by the Holy Spirit is out and available. It's out now as an e-book, an electronic book, a digital book. You can read it on Amazon Kindle. You can get it on Akada Books. You can get it on our website. You can buy the book and read it. Dancing with your spirit, being led by the Holy Spirit. And I had the honor of having Reverend Emiko Amoshika write the foreword for the book. And you want to read what he wrote, I can tell you. And this is the book right here in my own library in iBooks right here. In my own library, there is Dancing With Your Spirit, that's it. And the chapters are right there, and you can open them up. There's a forward, there's an introduction. Section one is who is the Holy Spirit. Section two, you know, talks about who am I. Section three tells you what is a dance. You keep hearing about dancing with the Spirit. What is a dance with Him? And section four tells us what happens when you dance with Him. This is 17 chapters of the Word of God. 17 chapters that will open your eyes into what it really means as a child of God to be led by the Holy Spirit. So come with me on this journey. Get yourself your own copy. Get it for somebody else. The e-books are available. Okada Books, Amazon Kindle, on our website. And very soon the hard copies will be made available. I'll be back here to tell you. Dancing with your spirit being led by the Holy Spirit. Hello and welcome to Fresh Tea. I am Pastor Nkechi Ene and it's always my pleasure to welcome you to every single episode of Fresh Tea. Today on Fresh Tea, we're taking part 23 of our ongoing message series, Another Economic System. I hope your life is being changed for the better by this series. Our text has been from Isaiah 55, reading from verse 1. Oh, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come by and eat. Yes, come. Buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend money for what is not bread and your wages for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me. And eat what is good, and let your soul delight itself in abundance. Incline your ear and come to me. Hear and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you, the sure mercies of David. Indeed, I have given him as a witness to the people, a leader and commander for the people. Surely you shall call a nation you do not know. And nations who do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God and the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Economy is defined as a state of a country or region in terms of the production and consumption of goods and services and the supply of money. It's also defined as the administration of the material resources of an individual community or country, the state of those resources. And economic is defined as pertaining to or having reference to economy or to economics, capable of yielding a profit. But A has been getting to know about the system 
God set up this system, you need a paradigm shift to operate in a system that literally de-emphasizes and sometimes even bypasses money completely. He set it up for everyone. He set it up to save you from the usual economic system. He's made the best available in this system. The prophet uses wine and milk to define this best. And so we looked at them. Milk, we said milk is nourishment, milk is provision, milk is a blessing, and milk depicts the favor of God, the milk of favor. And we began to look at wine. Wine, we said, is a symbol of luxury. We looked at the realm of lack, which is the realm of poverty, where you don't have. It's good to meet God in that realm, that's fine. But you don't stay there when you walk with God. Then we looked at three other realms of abundance, the realm of miracles, when you discover what God can do, you should be able to say this with me by now. The realm of purpose, when you discover why God does what he does. And the realm of luxury, when you discover how much God can do, when you have settled what he can do and why he does it. Looking at luxury, luxury is approved by God. Luxury is an expression of the glory of God. Luxury is meant to be under your control. And luxury is not meant to be consumed alone. Moving on from there, in the last episode, we began to look at wine in other terms. We now looked at wine as a symbol of an abundant harvest, and we dealt with that. Today, we'll look at another thing about wine. Remember, wine is offered in this economic system that God set up, and we're seeing different things that are in this system, different things that come together to make this system work. So wine is a symbol of intoxication from a place of fellowship. Ay, ay, ay. How does this have anything to do with the economic system? Well, you'll see. Wine is a symbol of intoxication from a place of fellowship. First Samuel 1.14, and it happened as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli watched her mouth. Now Hannah spoke in her heart. You know the story, Hannah was the mother of Samuel. She was to become the mother of Samuel. At this time, she didn't have a child. So she was praying before God because her rival other wife, who was married to her husband, um, was teasing her and she was really in a lot of pain. So now Hannah spoke in her heart. Only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought she was drunk. That's important. Eli thought she was drunk. So Eli said to her, how long will you be drunk? Put your wine away from you. But Hannah answered and said, no, my Lord, I'm a woman of sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor intoxicating drink, but I've poured out my soul before the Lord. So we see here, wine as a symbol of intoxication. The way she was in her place of fellowship with God and was muttering to herself, she looked like one that was drunk. She looked like a drunken person. And Eli assumed that she was drunk. She says, no, no, no. This is not the intoxicating drink I had. So she was exhibiting traits of someone that was drunk. Hannah was in continuous fellowship with God. And her fellowship with him was like one intoxicated with wine. Well, in this dispensation, child of God, in the church of Jesus Christ today, in the church we are in post the ascension, for us, the born-again church, we see the symbolism of wine and the intoxicating anointing of the Holy Spirit. And we see it revealed in the power of praying in other tongues. I'm not going to go into a teaching about praying in other tongues. I've got many teachings on that. But we just want to show you here that wine that is offered in this economic system, follow me carefully, it's a symbol of intoxication that comes from a place of fellowship. We saw that with Hannah in, in, in the Old Testament. But we see that even more, more um, relatively in the New Testament here in the church age, in the, in the epistles, Ephesians 5. And do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. Be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Do not be drunk with wine. The Phyllis puts it this way. Don't get your stimulus from wine, for there is always the danger 
of excessive drinking, but let the spirit stimulate your souls. Express your joy in singing among yourselves psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, making music in your heart for the ears of God. How does this relate to what we're talking about in this economic system? You know, in the place of fellowship, when you drink, like a lot of us know, in Ephesians 5, when he says be filled with the Spirit, it literally means be being filled with the Spirit. So a continuous fellowship with the Spirit, a continuous interaction with the Holy Spirit, continuous fellowship with the Spirit of God and the Word of God. And the result is that you're like one who's drunk with wine. But look at this. In relating this to this economic system, we see that intoxication that comes from fellowship with the Spirit of God makes you immune and oblivious to the things around you like a drunk person. I'll say it again. I mean, have you seen a drunk person literally want to walk into traffic? Have you seen a drunk person walk in a gutter like they're walking on the highway? Have you seen a drunk person talk to imaginary people and have a conversation with air? He's completely, conversation with air, that was funny, completely oblivious. Anything going on around him? Somebody could be dying next to him. He has no idea what's going on because he's drunk. Well, child of God, when you are drunk in fellowship with the Holy Spirit, which is the foundation of this economic system? Which is the only way you can truly operate it when you have that kind of walk with God? When you are drunk, you are oblivious. When they tell you that the, the banks want to shut down, you're like a drunk man. It means nothing to you. When they tell you that the exchange rate has changed in your country, and think, you're like oblivious. When they give you statistics that... It, the unemployment rate is going out of work. It literally means nothing to you. You're like a drunken fool. You're just moving around completely oblivious. You need to be drunk with the wine that this economic system offers you. You need to be drunk in order to be oblivious to the usual economic system, which is sending you impulses on a daily basis. When the bank calls you and to reminds you of your debt, when your wife looks at you and reminds you of school fees, you need to be in a different realm from those. I'm not saying deny your responsibilities, but I'm saying you're completely oblivious to the impulses that want to breed fear and discouragement in you. There's something deeper you're, you've taken. You've taken the wine, the intoxicating wine that comes from fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Glory be to God. That was the kind of wine that Abraham drank. That's what the Bible can say about Abraham in Romans 4. That he, he, he literally was like God. And he says, God who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Who contrary to hope, in hope believed. Contrary to what? Because again, let's translate this. When you're in that realm, you're like, everything contrary around you means nothing. You don't consider those things. They don't mean anything to you. You believe because you're drunk. You believe because your impulses come from the Spirit of God. You believe because you know what the promises have said concerning you. So when you get into the Word and the Spirit and make the fellowship with them a lifestyle, you become oblivious, listen, child of God, oblivious to the impulses of the usual economic system in your surroundings you literally become only sensitive to the impulse of the word and the spirit of God. There is a time when ignorance is bliss. There is a time when ignorance is bliss. And this is one of those situations where you can take, I normally wouldn't, don't take that expression. Ignorance under normal circumstances is not bliss. Ignorance of the word of God will kill you, you'll perish. No, but that, that's not what we're talking about here. You need to be ignorant of the impulses that come from outside of the word of God. And just like a drunken man, we are in that place of fellowship. So you don't spend your time trying to understand or know about this system by, you know, fretting about it or sowing your seed like you're doing some kind of gambling thing. No, no. It needs to come from a place of revelation. It needs to come from a place where you're so sucked up into the spirit realm. Come from a place where you're friends with the Holy Spirit, where you know the word of God, where you're in that kind of fellowship, where you're drunk. And when you're drunk, you're completely oblivious 
towards creating about you, to around you. So when the prophet talks about drinking wine and milk, he's actually calling you, child of God, to a place of drunkenness that is beneficial to you. I'll say it again. When the prophet talks about drinking wine and milk, he's calling you to a place of drunkenness that is beneficial to you. We need to be drunk on the wine that this economic system offers, child of God. We need to be drunk. You need to know the scriptures. You know, I've, in these past 20, what, 22 parts, we've used so many stories. We've looked at many case studies. You need to know them. You need to know the promises. You need to spend time praying in other tongues, be being filled with the Holy Spirit. When you pray in other tongues, God begins to give you direction. Direction in this economic system. In fact, in the usual economic system, if you're a stockbroker or you're somebody who, a banker, you, you look for information before you take steps. You listen to the stock exchange. You listen to the, to, the, to the news every day. You check out the bank rates. You're looking for information. Well, look for information in the spirit realm. If God set it up, then God has the information about this economic system. And you don't find them in the newspapers. You don't find them on television. You find them in a place of fellowship, in a place where you're in continuous fellowship. One of the reasons why a lot of people, businessmen particularly, struggle is they spend a lot of time, born-again businessmen, by the way, they spend a lot of time practicing business principles on their business without ever having a time of romance and fellowship with the Word and the Spirit. They spend a lot of time dancing with the usual economy and never dancing with the Holy Spirit. That's my new book. You've got to learn how to dance with the Holy Spirit and be led by the Holy Spirit. That's when you drink this wine, this intoxicating drink that comes from the place of fellowship that suddenly makes every impulse from the usual global economic system. You're totally oblivious to it. You really have no clue. And you begin to talk like a drunken man. People are telling you things going on around you that show that there's a casting down. In your drunken state, you say, there is a lifting up for me. And someone says, what's she talking about? Hasn't she heard that people are losing their jobs? Hasn't she heard that churches are closing? Hasn't she heard, oh, but you're drunk. Why haven't you seen that the casting down? You say, really? There's a casting down? Well, for me, uh -huh. there is a lifting up. Well, for me, abundance comes to me. What you're drinking, the intoxicating wine that comes from the presence of God, that comes from the place of fellowship, that comes from time with the word and the spirit. That is how, that is how you begin to see the goodness of God in this economic system. Look at Psalm 1 and verse 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight. That's what comes first. Where is your delight, child of God? Where is your delight in this season? Where is your delight in this global economic crisis? Where is your delight? His delight is in the law of the Lord or the word of God. And in his law, he meditates day and night. <laughs> not on CNN, not on channels television. No, those things are good. You need some basic information. But that's not where you meditate day and night. You need to get drunk in fellowship with the Holy Spirit. You need to get drunk on the Word and the Spirit. You need to get drunk with Numa and Zoe. You need to get drunk with the Word and the Spirit. I'll say it again. In his law, in his Word, he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree, planted, secure by the rivers of water, that brings forth its fruit. You will bring forth your fruit in the right season, glory be to God. Its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither. And whatever, whatever he does, what kind of guarantee is that? It's a guarantee that comes from a place of intoxication, from a place of revelation, from a place of spending time with the word and the spirit. We can never get so sophisticated that we get too sophisticated for fellowship with God. We can never get so into the word of God that we don't 
romance with the word of God and the spirit of God. Then we become mere orators. We become those who just speak and don't have time with God. No, no. it's in that place of fellowship you drink the intoxicating wine that makes you oblivious. You know, this picture shows us that a righteous man is actually the best picture of this economic system. A righteous man. Not just a righteous man, but a righteous man who walks with God is the best picture of this economic system. Look at that. You want to portray this economic system, then you are a righteous man who understands and walks with God, spends time with God, and drinks the new wine, the new wine that comes in the place of fellowship. That is the best picture of this economic system. That is the best picture that you can see. Having luxury and having abundance without having a place of fellowship and understanding the purpose for those things is nothing before God. Those things don't impress God. God wants your time. God wants you to be drunk on him. And when you're drunk on him, and you meditate day and night, child of God, you begin to get ideas. You begin to see things. You begin to attract the favor of God onto you. And all kinds of things begin to happen. This has been my personal experience. Recently, I had, a, I had an experience. I shared it with the church. I pastor. In our church, we run a, a budget system, a financial system, that runs for one month of the year and ends in the 12 months later. And you know, actually, it runs from July to June. And, you know, at the beginning of the, the new financial year, I tell the church normally what the plans are for the year, the things we want to do, trying to operate a pre-transparent system, tell the church, you know, the major projects that we did the previous year and all of that, and the people make pledges and they partner with the ministry, free will, voluntary pledges. And I was preparing for this message, you know, taking the story from Mark 11, I believe, about the, 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 the cult that was tied up. And I was preparing that morning to go preach my message and share it with the people. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me and asked me to sow a seed myself personally. You see, listen to me. Pastors do sometimes need to sow seed all the time, really. It's like I often say, you're a Christian first because before you're a pastor. And the Holy Spirit will, will find out if you believe what you preach. And if you believe what you preach, he'll tell you to sow as well. And he didn't just ask me to sow a little seed. Remember we said, we said um, the previous episode, burying your generous seed. This was a seed I had been saving for like three or four years. I mean, this was literally all I had. Literally. All I had in all my accounts put together. And the Holy Spirit didn't ask for half of it. He asked for all of it. And I was sitting there that morning. Actually, I was making up for service. And he just said to me, the Lord has need of that seed. But do you know what happened? And that's why I'm linking this to this, this, this point about wine being a symbol of the intoxication. In fact, it's happening to me right now. An anointing of God just came upon me right there in the room as I was preparing. This was so weird. Right there, I literally got drunk once I received the instruction. And that is what enabled me to easily re release that seed without even thinking twice. There was such joy. There was something that bubbled up on the inside of me. And then I began to hear him say, this, your seed, will be a trigger. It will be a trigger for the people. And the people will then burst forth and give. And others will come from fire and wide and give. And I thought, oh, my word, this is what God is saying to me. And there was so much presence of God right there in that little room as I was preparing. That is the kind of anointing that is present when you drink wine from a place of fellowship. But I was, I was making up but I have a walking, active fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And I could hear him say, I want it all. Again, I repeat, he didn't take some. He literally took, like, putting it all together, I mean, 90% of everything, everything I have in all my accounts put together. And now, like, boy, something you saved for, like, three or four years for a particular project, he said, no, that need that is competing with that seed, that seed is for me. And with joy and the presence of God, I'm like one drunk. Suddenly, that project I had been saving for for like three or four years meant nothing. It paled into insignificance before the need of the Lord and the anointing of God, the drunkenness of God came upon me. Glory be to God. That is what happens when in the place of fellowship, you begin to receive impulses. And that is how you operate 
in this economic system? Why is the symbol of intoxication? So when that thought comes to you, go apply for that job. And right there it says, we only want people with this kind of degree. And your degree is not up to that. If the impulse comes in the place of fellowship, go apply. Go put it in. That is, what, that, that is the kind of thing that happens in this economic system. When the impulse comes to you, do this. And everything around you says don't do it. If it's an impulse from that place of fellowship, from that place of intoxication, or well, just like a drunken man, you obey those impulses and the turnaround and the change comes in your life. Thank you. Oh, my word. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your presence, even in the homes of people, even in their cars, even on their phones, through their phones. Thank you for making it clear that you want to dance with them and show them the beauties in this economic system. Thank you for your people who drink the wine that comes from the place of fellowship with your word and your spirit. We give you praise, Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Romans 10, 17 says, So then, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You can order today's message and other past messages on our website store, freshdew.tv. It is available on MP3 and CD and also on MP4 and DVD just as seen on TV. Fresh Dew, giving you fresh inspiration and direction for your life. Thank you for watching Fresh Dew today with Pastor Nkichi Ene. We trust you were blessed by today's episode. For further information on Fresh Dew, please call us on 0700 Fresh Dew, which is 0700 3737 4339. If you're calling from outside Nigeria, the number will be plus 234 700 3737 4339. Our phones are open from 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. GMT plus one. You can also send us an email to info at freshdew.tv and we'll be glad to serve you. We also invite you to like, follow and interact with us on our Twitter and Facebook pages at Freshdew TV and also on Pastor Nkechi's Facebook pages at Pastor Ketch. For more information on how you can partner with Freshdew and receive Pastor Nkechi's monthly letters and weekly MP3 gifts, please visit our website www.freshdew.tv Once again, thanks for being with us today and we look forward to seeing you next time on Fresh Dew to receive fresh inspiration and direction for your life.